What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. We're out here today, back in the garage, working on the Pinto engine. That dawned on me the other day that I gained quite a few new subscribers through a video that done really well, and I haven't really explained what the project is. So basically, I've got a Mark II Escort, I'm currently converting it from left-hand drive to right-hand drive, and I've finished all the brackets for that now, so technically it's right-hand drive. I've also got the Pinto engine, which I started to strip down in the last video, and we're going to be cracking on with refreshing a few parts later on in this video. This is how the Escort sits at the moment. All the interior is stripped out, I bare metals all the floor uh, to find any rust. There was a couple of patches. Main one being just at the back down there, I repaired that so I know there's no rust hiding now. And I also stripped the engine bay clean from all paint and everything. All the primer you see on this now is stuff that I've put on. As you can see the bulkhead area is a work in progress. I have been welding inside that's why it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. But I have swapped the left hand drive holes now to the right hand drive as I said. It's mainly converted to right hand drive now. I've even done the wipers, which I've done in a previous video. I thought I'd better include that little one minute recap of the project because there are always new subscribers watching the videos and I didn't want anyone to get confused or not know what we're talking about. Enough talking about the Escort, let's crack on with some work. Over the weekends, I went down to Burton Power and picked up quite a few parts for my engine. So let's have a quick look at them. I've got this massive box full, paint weren't included. So I'll talk about that when I come to painting the engine. I've got all sorts in here, guys. I've got gasket kits, I've got timing belt, that front oil seal cover that I was talking about. I've got water pump, thermostat housing. I've got loads of HT leads, spark plugs, oil filter, clutch kit. So yeah, there's quite a lot here to keep me busy. I do just want to give a shout out to the guys down at Burton Power because it was my first time actually visiting their shop, normally just order online. And yeah, really helpful and I even managed to look around the showroom. It is worth noting that when I popped down to Burton Power at the weekends, I didn't manage to pick up everything, mainly because I'm not made of money. I've got to save up my money a little bit more, and then I'll be able to afford the sump, the dipstick, the oil pickup, and a few other little bits and bobs. Moving on to the first job of the day, I'm going to start stripping the paint off of the block a little bit more. You would have seen if you watched the previous video that this paint is coming off really easily. The cam cover I'm not going to touch, mainly because I'm quite undecided about it. I don't want to put a boring black one in. I would like to put something with maybe Mark II Mitch on it or even a beige colour coded cam cover, so I don't know. Whack your ideas in the description box below. For the time being, we've got a little Mark II Mitch up there, but I just don't think it's cutting it. <laughs> I think I've said everything I need to. Cue the time lapse and the music, and we get this paint stripped off. That's this side's completely stripped of the old paint. I guess there's only one thing to do and crack on with the other side. The engine block has been completely stripped from its old flaky red paint now. 
What I'm going to do now is just whack a bit of brake cleaner over this and a wire brush to make sure I get any last bits of debris off of the block because there are a few patches that are like rusty so I want to clean them up just before I whack down my engine enamel paint. I've basically just gone over both sides with some brake cleaner and a small wire brush to get in all the nooks and crannies. Both sides are looking better. Just before I paint the block, I thought I might as well mention where I got this paint from. It's from a place called Leonard Brooks in Harlow. A bloke called Jack actually recommended to go there and yeah, as soon as I walk through the door, they basically ask you what you want the paint for, how are you applying it, they give you advice. So uh, yeah, I'm glad I used a proper paint shop. Anyway, you'll all be pleased to know I went for a nice and exciting colour, which is gloss black. <laughs> So uh, yeah, they basically make this up for you while you wait as well, which is pretty cool. But hey, look at that. Right, I just need to stir this well and we'll get applying. The painting yesterday took a little bit longer than I originally expected. What I had to do first is put a nice thin layer onto the block, let that dry for about 20 minutes, and then I went and put another layer, but much thicker. So yeah, it did take a little bit longer than I originally expected, but the finish on it is absolutely amazing. It's just a shame because the cam cover ruins it, but once it's removed, <laughs> the engine looks like it's actually getting somewhere. Anyway, moving on, I'm going to be starting to delve into changing some of the parts today. Now the first job on the list is to replace the cam belt because I don't know the history of when it was last changed so it's always best to just change it along with a tensioner. But whilst that's off, we're also going to be replacing this crank oil seal front cover, whatever you want to call it, uh, because it has got a little bit of damage there. I did say this in the other video, it's not actually affecting the operation, it's not leaking, but just for the looks, I want to replace it. Just before we start to strip this all apart, we need to make sure that the engine stays in time. So I've currently got it lined up in top dead center. As you can see, I've got this marking on the crank pulley lined up with the other marking coming off of the oil seal cover. But whilst the belt's off, we wouldn't want the cam going out of time. On mine, for some reason, I think it might be different. I can't see any markings. So we're going to have to go old school. I've got the tip X out. So I'm just going to use one point and, yeah, make a little line. I'll also do the same down here as well. One lined up. Two lined up. And three lined up. It's time to take the tension off of the belt. So there's just two 13 mils up here. I have just quickly had a look at the belt. It's about half a turn. That's how much tension it's got on it. I've had a little bit of trouble getting this crank sprocket off, but I've used my initiative, thought about it, and yeah, I've ended up using a hammer. Nah, no, joking. I've wedged the screwdriver in there. There weren't a lot of play, so I just gently went around, and from the bottom as well, because I've removed the sump. So just gradually getting it out, nice and square. Yeah, boy. With that sprocket all removed, I can give that a good clean up. But the main thing is, I've got the oil seal cover off. And there's your oil seal, just hiding in there. 
What I'm going to do next is clean up all of this area, make it a bit more presentable, wire, brush, all of the old gaskets off, and then we get to fit in some new parts. I've gone over all of the surface with a wire brush and some brake cleaner. It's all nice and clean and smooth. I even managed to get behind this cam sprocket. So yeah, it's all nice and clean. The first part to go on is the oil seal cover. Here it is, looking nice and fresh. I've taken one of my oil seals out of my bottom end oil seal kit, which I also purchased. So I need to tap this in nice and straight. Oil seal is now tapped home. And I'm just gonna whack on the gasket with a little bit of sealant. The oil seal cover is now completely bolted up and tight. I've got a lovely slim line of blue silicone going around the top, which is always satisfying to see. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I've cleaned up the crank sprocket, so I'm just gonna put this back on. I'm just currently bolting up the new tensioner. Only finger tight, because obviously we need to set the tension on it. Right, next up is the cam belt. So I've already matched it up to the old one and they're both the exact same length, which is always a bonus. Right, let's get to fitting it. Start at the bottom. Keeping it nice and tight. My marking is still bang on at the top here. Same with the cam one. Not quite sure how you're meant to set the tension, but what I've done is I've wedged in my screwdriver, I've gradually levered it until I'm happy with the tension, and I'm just gonna do the bolts up now. Right, that went quite smoothly. I've got the belt all on now and it's tensioned up. I think that's pretty much bang on. If I do notice that it's slightly too slack or whatever, I will readjust it but for the time being I'm pretty happy with that. The belt's nice and central and I've just check again my marker, my marker and my marker are all bang on but what I need to do is because I fitted a brand new timing belt I need to make sure it goes round fully and doesn't clash or I haven't got out of time or anything even though we know through our markings still needs turning over. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I'm gonna do it again just to check. Let's have two full rotations. I think we can call that a success. Also from Burton Power, I bought a water pump and it comes with a gasket as well. Same sort of scenario with the water pump. I've got my blue gasket sealant and I'm gonna put a little bit over there. Some people might say you don't need it, but I just like to do it, belts and braces sort of thing. And then I'll try and marry up the water pump to the engine. New and old next to each other, let's get it fitted. Next up to be fitted is the thermostat and new housing because someone informed me that I had a Sierra housing. As you can see, they're slightly different. One's got a longer water feed and there's also a little nipple at the top of that one. Anyway, I bought a original thermostat so this isn't got like a temperature change or anything like that. I've got the retaining clip, gasket, and this seal. I can only assume that this goes in there after the retaining clip. Right now I've just had to use a bit of common sense I guess because in this thermostat it's sitting like that but if I put mine in like that the retaining clip won't sit properly because it's got like three sides and this has got two lugs here and here but if I flip it over then that's going to fit nice and easily and there's a little recess 
along the edge for my clip to go in. So I think that's just how I'm going to fit it. The retaining clip is all now in. I'm just going to put this rubber bung in there as well. I'm pretty sure it's meant to sit something like that. I'm not sure if it needs to be pushed all the way down or what. I think I'm overthinking it a little bit now. I'm going to take this rubber seal out because the old one doesn't have one and I feel like this would be alright without it. I'm going to keep it and if you guys go mental at me in the comment section below I'll put it back on but all I can see that doing is restricting the flow slightly so yeah I'm happy with it like that. Let's get it fitted. Wow, look at that. I had to take that crusty cam cover off to actually appreciate how good the engine's looking. Them parts are all on now. That's got to be at least half the parts we've fitted, if not more, that we picked up from Burton Power. Satisfying job now. So that is all completely done. Gasket kit can't really tick off. Thermostat house in. And thermostat all done. Water pump. Spark plugs and oil filter, I do have them, but I'm not going to fit them just yet. Got the clutch, still needs to buy the sump. Got the exhaust and inlet studs, but we'll fit them in another video. Lower crankcase housing is all done. HT leads, got them, but I don't need to fit them, and we painted it. There we go guys, so in this video we have started to transform the 2 litre Pinto. The next big thing for the engine is really going to be buying all of them sump bits. I've nearly got enough money, I'll uh, be heading back down to Burton Power soon to pick up that. And then the engine will be a lot closer to the finishing line. I do also need to get rid of that crusty cam cover, so if you guys have got any recommendations of where to get it from or any ideas of what colour to paint it, then please leave it in the comment section below. I really need to get it sorted because it's letting the engine down. I hope you guys like following the progress on the engine as much as I like working on it. And if it's helped any of you guys out or even given you a little bit more guidance for working on a Pinto engine, then to me, that is very satisfying. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.